This is your Weather Extreme video for Sunday, February the 15th. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Well, and what a mess we have going on and uh, likely to go on. So let's get right to what the weather is looking like. The surface map shows a large high pressure over the western Great Lakes that's bringing a northerly flow into Alabama, and that's definitely going to chill us down. We're going to be on the order of at least 20 degrees colder than we saw yesterday with a beautiful day yesterday with highs in the 60s. The upper air pattern shows this long wave trough position over the eastern third of the country, and it's going to stay play in place for the next several days for much of the week ahead, as a matter of fact. So don't look for any real warming ahead. I'm not seeing anything more than maybe the 50s by the end of the week. Temperatures across the U.S. are pretty chilly, uh, stretching from the Dakotas all the way down into the Tennessee River Valley and back up into New England with uh, lots of uh, single digits as well as some minus values there. Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan coming in this morning at minus 18, so that's pretty chilly. Not quite that cold in central Alabama with temperatures behind the cold front now in the 20s across the area. I expect us to bottom out uh, between about uh, 18 and uh, 23 degrees across central Alabama. The watch warning map is uh, certainly a rather hodgepodge of winter weather advisories across the central and lower portions of the Mississippi River Valley. All of the uh, kind of turquoise color you see are winter weather watches. The uh, purple are winter weather advisories, and the uh, reddish, kind of reddish-pink colors are winter storm warnings. So there is a variety of those with a surface low that's going to be uh, bringing a mess to the southeastern United States. QPF-wise, we are looking at uh, rainfall a little less than we saw yesterday, as a matter of fact, but uh, we're looking at liquid equivalents of on the order of one to one and a half inches. Storm Prediction Center, as you might imagine, is not out looking any organized severe thunderstorms, but they are suggesting some thunderstorms possible in Texas on day one and across Texas and Louisiana on day two. And then on day three, they're not forecasting any thunderstorms at all. All right, let's get to the models and let's talk about what uh, we think is going to be happening. And of course, uh, it's uh, as James points out, this is a, a good time to begin looking out the window and less at the models, but we still have the models to help us with some guidance. This is the 06 GFS model run and the 18Z map four uh, today. And you can see that uh, the cold air is uh, definitely in place and we have a reasonably nice weather. We're going to take an intermediate time and that is tomorrow morning at 12Z. We show that uh, the precipitation has begun, but notice the 540 line is gone all the way up into uh, Tennessee. Looking at the uh, the cold air uh, in the lower part of the atmosphere, we're looking at the 925 millibar uh, temperature uh, profile, and we see that the zero-degree isotherm is in North Alabama. So while North Alabama looks like they're going to have precipitation in the form of wintry mix, it does look like if the GFS is right on this track and this position that the uh, atmosphere would be too warm for much icing and uh, snow down our way. We look at uh, uh, we look at Monday evening at 6 p.m. and we see that the uh, warm air has been nudged quite a bit further north, all the way up into the Tennessee River Valley. Now, here's where I have some concerns, and that is I'm wondering if the GFS could possibly be underestimating the amount of evaporative cooling. When we look at the sounding, especially the lower part, we see that it is very dry in the lower part of the atmosphere. So that means that as precipitation falls into that, we're going to see the temperature and the dew point come closer together. That could change things. So the dynamic cooling that will occur is, uh, is questionable as to whether or not the GFS is getting it right. Looking at uh, the GFS uh, idea of when the precipitation begins, it still looks like first thing Monday morning as we hit uh, sunrise, looks like precipitation will begin, uh, especially in the northwestern corner of the state, and be a mixture. Looks like across the Tennessee River Valley, uh, they stay a mixture, but it, if the GFS position of the low right through the middle of central Alabama is correct, then it looks like we'd have enough warming that we would just have a cold rain. And this is uh, Monday afternoon at uh, 6 p.m. And then uh, finally, uh, by early Tuesday morning, uh, midnight or so, and into the early morning hours, it looks like the precipitation could change over. And looking at the GFS Moss guidance, one of the things that I'm concerned with is it shows the 12Z temperature at Birmingham of 25. I think the temperature is going to be on the order of 3 or 4 degrees colder than that. And if that's true, then the bottom line is 
The model is not initializing exactly right, and we may need to adjust later. But in the meantime, the National Weather Service is moving the threat up basically north of Birmingham, across the northern tier of counties uh, of central Alabama. And, uh, of course, the National Weather Service in Huntsville is keeping their, their area under winter storm watch. And uh, this is uh, the ABC 3340 forecast uh, by James Spann of uh, sleet, freezing rain, accumulation still on the possibility of a third of an inch. And we need to be vigilant and stay alert. Looking back at the GFS by uh, 18Z on Monday, it shows a warm rain, a cold rain, but warmer than warm enough so that there's just rain occurring across central Alabama. We get out to uh, the midnight uh, Monday night into early Tuesday morning. The low is over uh, eastern, east central Georgia, so the precipitation is likely to be changing to a snow uh, situation over us. And then by 18Z on Tuesday, uh, we're seeing the cold air come back in really good, and uh, that means that we'll be chilling down, getting very cold, but we will be drying out. In the upper atmosphere at 18Z on Tuesday, we see a very deep trough, generally uh, along and just slightly west of the Mississippi River Valley. We go out to, to Wednesday, and that trough is still in place, so the bottom line is we're going to stay cold. You see the 540 thickness line all the way down to the Gulf Coast. The overall trough position stays with us on Thursday, and again on Friday, we're showing just a slight dampening to the deepness of the trough, and the GFS is suggesting that Friday morning we may have another repeat of this winter weather threat with uh, a winter weather mix beginning Friday morning and into the early afternoon hours of Friday before we warm up enough as the pattern flattens a little bit on Saturday, and that would be enough to uh, basically turn us back uh, to all a cold rain on Saturday. We get out to Sunday and we see another trough coming into the north central United States, and that will bring us another shot of cold air, but it looks like we'd have a wet Sunday. And looking out into voodoo country, the GFS is maintaining this position of the long wave trough over the eastern half of the country, so we're not going to be warming up much. We do see a little bit of a change by uh, the 27th, uh, but again, still a pretty cold look to it. But the thing we saw yesterday in terms of the um, uh, severe weather threat, it looks like March 1st is still looking like a potentially severe weather threat with the pattern the GFS is suggesting, if indeed it does verify. Well, that'll do it for the Weather Extreme video for this morning. James Spann will have the next edition first thing on Monday morning. In the meantime, stay tuned to the blogs for updates on this developing weather situation. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Have a great day and Godspeed.